The exchange between Peter and Jesus in the Gospel today reveals the perennial conflict between faith and suffering. As Jesus explains and starts to prepare his apostle for what is going to happen, his suffering and his death, it's too much for Peter to take. God forbid, Lord, that any such thing should happen to you. He couldn't see how this person in whom he had come to put so much faith person whom he was becoming convinced truly was sent by God, could possibly endure such horrible things. It made no sense to him. Jesus quickly went to correct him. Get behind me, Satan. You're an obstacle to me. If you see things not as God sees them, but as men, as human beings. Conflicts played out time and time and time again in our lives. It's very tempting for us to think that if we have faith, if we follow the Lord, if we do the right thing, say the proper prayers, that everything will be all right. Nothing bad will come our way. How many times do I hear people say, why is this happening to so-and-so? They're such a good person. They go to church, they pray, yada, yada, yada. But that's thinking. As human beings, think not as God. That's seeing him with a very limited view. For when we read the scriptures, it's very clear. Jesus minces no words when it comes to what we are going to have to experience. As he goes on in the gospel, if you want to follow me, you must take up your cross. Jesus never said that if you follow me, you'll never have anything bad happen to you. He never said all would be well. He never promised us a rose garden as it were. In fact, he promised the exact opposite. Faith will not prevent us from experiencing bad things. Faith will not prevent suffering in our lives. The role of faith is not to ward off those things. That's part of life. Bad things do happen to good people. Life is so often unfair. In our faith, our belief in the living God doesn't change that fact, doesn't preserve us from it. But what our faith does is assure us of a final victory. At that time, Peter couldn't really see. The rest of the apostles really couldn't see. All they heard Jesus talking about was suffering and death. They probably didn't catch that little bit at the end. And on the third day, he rests. But that's the part of our faith. On the third day. Yes, Jesus suffered. A horrible death. Something beyond what most of us could even begin to grasp. Crucifixion was by no means a pleasant way to go. And as the apostles gazed at a distance where they were too afraid to get close, how crushed they must have been as all their hopes crumbled to the ground. But then, but a few days later, 
Something they could not in their wildest dreams have anticipated occurred. And he rose, he triumphed over the grave. And that is what our faith offers. The promise that no matter what suffering comes our way, no matter how bad things get, no matter how unfair this earthly life can be at times, that in the end, the victory has already been won. In the end, all will be well. That must be the bedrock of our faith. For if we start thinking, as human beings tend to think, all will be well right here and now if I just pray, I just go to church. I just do good things. As soon as something bad comes, we're ready to abandon God in a heartbeat. Well, God must not be there because look what's happening to me. Well, think about Jesus for a moment. If this is what he suffered being the very Son of God, why would we think that we're going to escape? If this is what happened to him, why would we think we're just going to get a stroll from the rose garden? That's not what our faith is about. We must see beyond the suffering. Because let's face it, there are things that will happen in life that all the praying in the world will change. We must see beyond all of that to the victory that is already ours. And when we reach that victory, when we experience our own Easter, when we see finally as God sees not as human beings do with their limited vision, but see with the infinite eyes of God, we realize that all those horrible things we went through, all the terrible trials and tribulations of earthly life, will be as but as a drop of water in the ocean, quickly forgotten, in light of what we will then experience. The Lord Jesus comes to us today and offers a foretaste of the victory as we feast at the table, the banquet table of the King. He offers us here his very self to strengthen us because he knows that again and again and again we will fall back into seeing things as human beings do. It is so very hard to keep our eyes on the prize at the end. He knows that every time suffering comes, that we're tempted to abandon our faith. So again and again and again, he nourishes us that we might have the strength to stand firm, that our eyes might be open that we may always focus on the prize that awaits, seeing beyond the suffering to the glory that is held out before us. May we come to him today, ready to be thus strengthened. May we come to him today, ready to allow him to guide us through the trials, the tribulations, the sufferings, the anguish, the heartbreak, to the wonderful life that awaits, where every tear will be wiped away, and all that we suffer will be but a dim memory as we rejoice forever in a life that has no more of that suffering. 
where there is no more unfairness, where all indeed will be well, where all manner of things will be indeed well. Not for a moment, not for a day, but truly.